This is going to be a versus between the Imperial First Class Star Destroyer and the Venator Class Star Destroyer. The Imperial First Class Star Destroyers were created sometime during the Clone Wars, where they saw very limited use in battle. After the creation of the Galactic Empire, these ships' production lines were expanded, and after a few years, they became an iconic symbol of the Empire and represented the might of the Imperial Navy. Initially, they were used as peacekeeping battleships, enforcing Imperial rule onto worlds, letting the populace know that they were capable of wiping out all life on the planet's surface. Though this was only true if the planet didn't have any planetary shields, and such an operation would have taken many hours if not days to accomplish. They later saw wide use during the Galactic Civil War, with one of them capturing Princess Leia's ship in A New Hope. They were used to escort larger Imperial dreadnoughts, as well as to engage and pursue rebel ships. After the Battle of Endor and the creation of the New Republic, Imperial Star Destroyers were used by various succeeding factions, including the Imperial Remnants and the New Republic itself. The Venator-class Star Destroyers, also known as Republic Cruisers or Jedi Cruisers, were widely deployed by the Galactic Republic during the Clone Wars. They were used for various roles, including landing troops onto planetary surfaces and engaging Separatist warships. After the Empire took over, these ships were used in the early years of the Imperial Era. However, they were soon replaced by other Imperial Star Destroyers, including the Imperial First Class Star Destroyers, which were not only bigger, but heavier, and also more powerful and more durable. The Imperial First Class Star Destroyer was created during the Clone Wars, so around 22 BBY. It required a crew of 37,000 men and could carry up to 9,700 troops. It carried about 114 starships, which included 48 TIE Fighters, 12 TIE Bombers, and 8 shuttles, as well as about 30 ground assault vehicles and walkers, which included 20 AT-AT walkers and 30 AT-ST walkers. It cost about 150 million credits to build this ship. For armament, it had 68 heavy turbo lasers, 5 medium turbo lasers, and 62 ion cannons. For shielding, it had two ISD-72X deflector shield generator domes, and the ship itself was heavily armored. The Venator-class Star Destroyer was created just before the Clone Wars, so 22 BBY. It required a crew of 2,000 men and could carry up to 2,000 troops. It carried about 460 starships, which included 192 V-Wings or V-19 starfighters, 36 ARC-170 starfighters, 192 Actis-class interceptors, and 40 Republic gunships, as well as 24 walkers of various types. It cost around 59 million credits to build this ship. For armament, it had 8 heavy turbo lasers, 2 medium turbo lasers, 52 laser cannons, and 4 heavy proton torpedo tubes. For shielding, it isn't exactly known what kind of shielding units it possessed, but it was well armored enough to take multiple direct hits from opposing starships before needing to retreat though we can safely say its shields and armor were weaker than the Imperial Star Destroyers, since the Imperial Star Destroyers were designed to be stronger and more durable than the Republic Cruiser. In a one-on-one -on -one battle, the Imperial Star Destroyer would completely obliterate the Republic Cruiser. The Imperial Destroyer had over eight times more heavy guns than the Republic Cruiser, and not only that, but it also possessed stronger shields and armor. Even if you pitted two Republic Cruisers against one, Imperial Destroyer, it would be safer to bet on the Imperial Destroyer. The Destroyer would just focus fire on one cruiser bringing it down quickly, while taking a short beating from the other ship. Then it would just focus fire on the second ship and bring it down quickly as well. Though in this scenario, it would probably be in critical condition, or would need at least some basic external repairs. Even if the Republic Cruiser had enough time to unleash all of its starfighters, they mostly consisted of fighters and not bombers and they would mostly act as a distraction to the Imperial TIE Fighters, while the Imperial Destroyer would just continue decimating the Republic Cruiser. The Imperial Destroyer was purposefully designed to destroy things, and to be able to take a beating, which explains why it has so many heavy guns. The Republic Cruiser, on the other hand, was designed more as a multiple role destroyer, being able to quickly transport troops and starfighters, while also being able to put up a fight against most other warships. 
Its defenses were more suited against starfighters and not other warships, which made sense for the Clone Wars, as they needed to defend against overwhelming droid starfighters. These two ships' designs made sense for their time periods. The Republic cruisers were more practical for a government that needed to produce many warships in a short period of time, that were capable to transport troops and vehicles quickly across the galaxy, and that were equipped with weapons to fight against overwhelming droid forces. The Imperial Star Destroyers made sense for a government that is trying to maintain its control over its territory and has time and money to produce these giant warships that were designed to keep entire systems in check. In conclusion, the Imperial Star Destroyers would win almost every engagement against the Republic cruisers, with a small possibility of a draw if the Republic cruiser did a kamikaze attack onto the Imperial Star Destroyer. With that being said, the Republic cruisers were very capable ships that were designed purposefully for a specific type of war that required quick transport of troops and vehicles, and to engage an enemy that used tactics that involved overwhelming their enemies. Remember, this is all completely our opinion based on the information provided. Let us know if you agree or disagree, and tell us why. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the Force be with you.